we'll start with uh, working around the expected questions for uh, the CBSC NAT for January and uh, the forthcoming July 2017. Now uh, we would be working section by section. So in this session we would work on the topics of higher education. In the next class we will work on the topics of uh, school and primary education. And finally we will take another class which will deal with the current environmental issues. So uh, now these are some of the topics which would be I would say are important for 2017 both the exams and some of them are even relevant for 2018. So all the students who are preparing for the upcoming examinations would find these classes useful. Now uh, we'll start with small snippets and then we'll work around with some major policy changes. Now education 2030 that's the sustainable development goal 4 we have already covered in the lecture. Again the concept of higher education we have covered in, in the previous uh, lecture. Now here are some of the important snippets. Uh, there has been a release of Yojana that's Rashtri Madhyamik Shiksha Abhiyan. Uh, similar to the Sar Shiksha Abhiyan which was mainly de uh, dealing with the primary education and universalization of primary education. This talks about secondary education and universalization of secondary education that is a step forward from the primary education. Then the MHRD has released the MOOC that is massive open online courses. Now it is important uh, for most of the questions related to higher education. Usually abbreviations are coming up as we see the trends in the previous year's papers. So it's important that you are clear with most of the uh, abbreviations. So MOOC is the massive open online courses which are provided by various universities. India's uh, MOOC uh, uh, initiative was started with Swayam that is study webs of active learning for young aspiring minds. And it was a kind of uh, major ambit under which the MOOC program was released. Now there have been the MOOC which are conducted independently by uh, various IITs and IIMs and other institutions. Uh, establishment of Indira Gandhi National Tribal University at Amarkantak in Madhya Pradesh. This started in 2008 and 9 by an act of parliament mainly uh, aiming to provide education to the tribal youth of the region. Now next is the NAC, uh, the National Assessment and Accreditation Council. NAC provides uh, rating for various universities and colleges. It was established in 1994 by UGC and it, is, uh, it ranks the various universities as well as the institutions and colleges. Then you have another board which is known as the NBA the, that is National Board of Accreditation again established in 1994 but this was by the All India Council for Technical Education and it accredits the programs and the institutions. Now to assess the quality of standard in higher education there is internal quality assurance cell that has been established. Uh, the next is the first commission on higher education was started in 1948 which was known as the Radha Krishnan commission and it talked about that institutions like universities should be free from any interference, uh, should be free from political interference and that was the basic idea uh, that was laid forward and it is still continues. Uh, then you have in 2009 the National Mission on Education through ICT that is Information and Communication Technology. Numerous times questions have been asked on the abbreviation for NMEICT and it aims to provide um, uh, information and technology in higher education so that everyone can get benefited. The next program is NEPTEL. NEPTEL is the national program on technology enhanced learning. It provides online courses, online YouTube lectures and so on. Then you have the gross enrollment ratio which we have already covered in the higher education class, the link which we discussed in the previous slide. Now gross enrollment ratio is highest uh, in case of Chandigarh uh, for higher education which is around 53%. Now there are some important missions that came into existence. You have the Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya National Mission on Teachers and Teaching. Now this mission was started in 2014-15 for 3 years. It focused on two things. First is the project based, based approach and the scheme based outcome. So what is the approach that should be followed and what is the scheme that, that comes out from that. So it focuses on four aspects. The institution the individual, the network and the leadership of academic institutes. So uh, under the individual orientation you have awards, 
you have innovation programs, workshops, seminars and so on. For institutions, there was three basic ideas that were given under this idea. The first was there should be schools of education mainly by the central universities. Then there should be center of excellence for curriculum and pedagogy by central and state universities and again an inter-university center for teacher education. So teachers should exchange between universities and there should be a kind of uh, knowledge enhancement program that should be worked around for teachers. So these were the basic ideas that were laid under the uh, Madan Mohan Malviya scheme. The next is the recently released that was in yesterday's news, the Indian Institute of Skill which was inaugurated in Kanpur uh, by Prime Minister. Uh, this institute has been inspired on the ideas of Singapore model of training and uh, the basic idea uh, under the Institute of Skill is the idea of a skill development program that was initiated by uh, Prime Minister recently. It is based on NSQF that is the National Skill Qualification Framework. And it includes some basic formats. The first is uh, the NULM, that's the National Urban Livelihood Mission, which aims for upliftment of rural poor. Then Sikho and Kamo, that's the 2013 uh, program, which worked for five minority groups for skill development, that's Muslims, Christians, Sikhs, Buddhists, and Parsis. The Mining Training Academy which is started in Gulabpara in Bhilwada and finally you have the Deen Dayal Upadhyay Grameen Kaushal Yojana which is again a skill development program initiated by Ministry of Rural Development. So all these fall under the uh, skill development and based on these you have a kind of model training institute uh, which, which, which is established in which is recently inaugurated in Kanpur. The next are two major committees and their recommendations for higher education. The first is the Yashpal committee. It talked about renovating the higher education. It talked about providing intellectual uh, autonomy to the scholars for creating national commission for higher education and research. And this would replace the existing regulatory bodies. It's explained that university has just two main functions that is research and teaching. So there should be more of practical training, diversification of growth and no fragmentation of knowledge that should be worked around. It also talked about restructuring the undergraduate program with, which mo with more of a skill based approach. Then you have the TSR Subramaniam committee. This is the recently released committee which works around the new education policy in India. It focuses on some basic highlights. First of all, establishment of Indian education service similar to the lines of Indian administrative service. And this would be uh, looked out or vested with the MHRD, the Ministry of Human Resource and Development. It explains to increase the GDP into education to 6%. Uh, it explains no detention policy for classes up to 5th or age group up to 11th, either of these two. And even after that, for the upper primary, it talks about remedial coaching and providing two extra chances for the student to appear for the examination. Uh, it suggests a national level entrance test after 12th standard and that should be common for students appearing from any board or any school across India. It also works around extending the midday meals scheme to secondary schools. It talks about decreasing the role of UGC merely to scholarship and fellowships and allow foreign universities to come in and open campuses in India. So these are some of the major reports, uh, major recommendations of TSR Subramaniam committee. Now next is National Research Professorship. Uh, this was released in 1949. Uh, all professors with the age group of 65 years and above who have contributed outstandingly to their field of research and academics uh, are eligible for this. Now next, uh, these are some of the initiatives that were released by MHRD. Uh, the first of its kind is E-Yantra. E-Yantra is an initiative of IIT Bombay and it talks about uh, creating next generation embedded systems or uh, kind of robotic technology to help develop practical solutions to the real world problems. It focuses on three things. First is creating robotics competition throughout the country to uh, capture out the best talent, to create lab setup initiative in various universities and colleges across India, uh, develop some resource development centers uh, which would provide as a hub for training of uh, robotics and finally uh, keep on holding symposium related to uh, information and e-antra. 
uh, expansion I could say. The next, this is important, this is a kind of pan IIT and IASC that is Indian Institute of Science Bangalore initiative and this initiative is known as imprint. Uh, the abbreviation is important, impacting research, innovation and technology. So the basic aim was uh, to accelerate research and innovation. So 17 institutes fall under 10 domains working, uh, worked around these 10 domains for accelerating innovation. Uh, this idea focuses on nexus of three basic concepts that is science, engineering and technology. When we talk about science, it aims at understanding the fundamentals. When I talk about uh, engineering, it uh, talks about explaining the basic know-hows and finally you have technology uh, which explains uh, understanding of what exactly sells. So it is a kind of best initiative uh, which uh, creates a combination from, for scholars from science, engineering and technology under these 10 heads. So uh, imprint is important for this year's examination. Now next NIRF that is National Institute of Ranking Foundation. It was released in 2015 uh, and it will focuses on five major parameters that is teachers, uh, teaching, learning and resources, research and professional practices, the graduation outcomes, the outreach and the inclusivity and finally the perception. The perception talks about peer perception, the public perception and so these are the basic five parameters based on which you provide ranking to various institutions. Now for 2016, you had the ranking framework separately for universities, engineering institutes, management institutes and pharmacy institutes. For universities, IISC that is Indian Institute of Science Bangalore topped the list. Under engineering, it was IIT Madra, uh, Madras. Then under uh, management, it was IIM Bangalore. And finally, in pharmacy, it was Manipal College of Pharmaceutical Sciences. However, in 2017, uh, there was a need to understand the changes in the ranking phenomena. And they said rather than a separate ranking for each discipline, there should be a common ranking. So for 2017, they have asked for a common ranking. Uh, all the universities which have minimum of 1000 students enrolled would be eligible. All the centrally funded universities and institutions would be eligible. The focus uh, on institutions with less than 1000 students which are highly specialized in certain fields would have a separate discipline specific ranking. Uh, this program would also include the ranking for undergraduate institutions. However, open universities and affiliated universities won't be ranked under NIRF. Now next is GYAN. It's a global initiative of academic networks. It talks about uh, creating a kind of worldwide perspective, uh, calling in scientists and technology or entrepreneurs from uh, national uh, globally to engage into the higher education institutes in India. So this would create more footfalls for, from foreign nations into India. As a result, our faculty and students would have chance, uh, more exposure and more ability to share and learn knowledge. It would increase participation. Uh, it would help uh, the international experts that are coming in to work on the problems related to India. And there would be new pedagogic methods that would come up in the education system. So that is again a new initiative released by MHRD. Then you have the Rashtriya Uchchatar Shiksha Abhiyan that specifically focuses on the higher education in India which was launched in 2013. It's a centrally sponsored scheme. Uh, the funding is 60-40 for general states, for special category states it's 90-100 and for union territories it's 100% centrally sponsored scheme. It talks about promoting a higher education, providing a base for SCST women and socially backward uh, sections of the society. And the basic idea under this scheme is creating clusters. So conversion of colleges into cluster universities is the basic theme. To upgrade the existing autonomic, autonomous college is another important idea. Now next is the higher education statistics and public information system that is HESPIS. Uh, it talks about 
a kind of central student portal that should be established and there should be longitudinal and specialized survey which should be conducted to understand the present education setup and how improvements could be made. As a result, there was all India survey on higher education that was conducted and 80% of the fund was uh, allocated for this job. Now, recently government has been iting, uh, asking for innovative ideas in various fields. One of that is the AICTE. AI Smart India Hackathon 2017 and it asked for uh, uh, solutions into the various fields. So there were 16 major areas in which solutions were asked for which are mentioned here. So basically some of those are like um, the carrier dendrogram, how the open data of university is lacking and issues like those. So all these 16 issues are addressed and there are kind of innovative suggestions that are being asked on these aspects. The next is Sastra and TCS. So Sastra is Shanmugam Art, Science, Technology and Research Academy along with the TCS, Tata Consultancy Services, they have started a teacher's training center in uh, Thanjavur district in Tamil Nadu. We have covered this as one of the updates. Again, some of the important links which were previously covered are the new education policy for 2016, the kind of journey from 1968-86-92 uh, education policy to the 2005 and 2016 uh, new education policy, the concept of choice based credit system and uh, all these have been covered in the previous uh, class on higher education. Uh, so this class was mainly focused on higher education. We will be working around with another class which will focus on school education and one more class for environment and the basic topics which are important for the upcoming examinations for environment. You can subscribe to our channel for more details. Have a good day ahead.